this video is going to cover adding components into your drawings and some of the places you can find components that might be better than the default Revit library, as well as how to add dimensions and annotations into your drawings. So, and I guess there's always an exception to the rule, but most of the time, whenever I'm adding components, I'm going to do it in like a floor plan style view. So I'm going to go into my level one view by just double clicking in my project browser. And I've got a couple of components that we want to add in. We're going to add all of our basic bathroom stuff, all of our kitchen stuff. There's the cat, of course, our water heater, our washer and dryer. And we can even add like some beds and maybe even furniture, depending on how far we want to get into it. Check in um, our building. Now, there aren't any loaded in necessarily by default or rather i should say there aren't many like good components loaded in by default the component tool itself is located right up here in your architecture tab or it is keyboard shortcut gm there we go and you'll see that there's a few things loaded in here but not really like all that much there's this old desk there's a couple of different like wood termination styles. There's some trees. There's not really a whole lot loaded in. If we want to load a model in, then we're going to use our load family tool, which again is keyboard shortcut FF. You do need to be logged in up here into an account in order to access it. Um, or rather, we made the keyboard shortcut FF for it in the first video. Um, there's a couple of different categories. And so if we want to just start in like our bathroom area here, I'm going to scroll down to plumbing because that's where I'm going to find most of the bathroom stuff. And we have architectural pieces as well as MEP, mechanical, electrical and plumbing. Typically, just for me, I try to stay away from any of these that have these green symbols on it. That means they have like electrical and they have like actual plumbing features attached to them. You can do all of that stuff within the systems tab. You can add in like electrical wiring schematics within this software. I'm just really unfamiliar with it, so I won't be doing that. Um, I'm going to go into my fixtures here. And I'm going to pick out just a toilet, just a plain old 3D toilet. You'll notice that there's a 2D and a 3D. This is only going to be a symbol that shows up in a floor plan. This is just an actual 3D model of a toilet. So I'm going to load that toilet in, and then I'm going to type CM to start the component tool, and you'll see here I've got a toilet. I can hit the space bar on my keyboard to rotate the toilet around, and I'm just going to eyeball this toilet onto where it roughly sits here in the master bath, and then same thing then with this bathroom as well. So I'm going to move it, and then lock it to this wall in this bath as well. And it should then, the toilet should move with the wall once we go change our size and stuff like that. Um, we've got to load in a family then for our tub. So I'm going to do FF again to open up my load family. And you can load several things in at once. So like I'm going to load, well, the vanity that I want is actually in a different spot. So I'm going to go back into the plumbing one. And just because I know from experience that there is this vanity right here that has like a cabinet and everything built out, as well as then if I scroll all the way down towards the bottom, we've got just our 3D tub. So I could check both of those off and hit load and just load several things in at a time. But now I've got my 3D tub. The tub is wall based here. So you'll see that I can only place it when I am hovering over a wall. The space bar can be used to flip it. I'm going to place it for now. Once I move my walls around, this tub might not be a good size fit for me. So we'll have to see if we need to make an adjustment for it. And the same thing. I'll place one here. Again, this tub seems like it's too small or rather too large, excuse me, for this area. But I still need to go in dimension and place things around. So we'll see after I move my walls if it's going to fit or not. And then I'm going to go add in my vanity as well. So that's up here. We've got our vanity. If we wanted to change the size, we could, but I'm just going to leave mine a little small. That double bar at the top is kind of like your backsplash. So you want to make sure that that's on the wall. And then I'll put another one in here as well. 
So if I want to see any of this three-dimensionally, let me hit escape a couple of times to get out of the tool. If I go into my 3D view, I can't really see much in my backing, or I can't really see much in my model like at all. Like if I was to try to be like really creepy, maybe I can like angle myself and be able to see the bathtub in this window. But like there would be obviously a much better way to do that. So I'm going to show you a method that works, but isn't ideal. And then I'm going to undo and show you the ideal method. What could work is we could click on this roof and we could come down to our little glasses and we could say temporarily hide this category. So it's going to hide all of the roofs in our model. And then we can see down into our bathroom and we can see all of our features. So this works, but it's not great. And especially if we have a building with a lot of stories, that's a lot of hiding of things we would have to do in order to be able to like get to see what we're trying to look at. So I'm gonna control Z to undo, or I could have even come down here and clicked on reset. The better option would be to use what's called the section box. So you'll notice here in the 3D view, we have section box. I'm just gonna check it off and move my cursor out. And if I zoom out, I've got this big box around my drawing. And if I click on that box, I can bring it in. And I usually try to keep it kind of tight around my drawing area. The one we're super looking in or interested in is this top control here. Because you can see, I can bring that down and cut my building open. I could also bring it in and cut like parts off of my wall and kind of give a 3D section. Um, so it does not work like the SketchUp tool where it gives you that live preview as you drag and move it. So sometimes it is a little bit of a game of playing around to make sure you're cutting through the right part. But this is pretty helpful to just drag down so that this way you can see inside your building and be able to look at some of those components that you've placed and make sure like you're happy with how things are looking. I'm going to go back into my floor plan here and just place a couple more components. So I'll do this utility room here next. So again, I'm going to go into that load Autodesk family, which is Cubo Toolset FF. And you can also, if we go back to just all, you can search up here for things. So if you're ever unsure of what category, I can type in water heater and I can find the water heater pretty, pretty darn fast. And then it will also tell me what category it's in, which is also pretty nice. So I'm going to load that water heater in. Cuber Torque at CM to start the component tool. And I'm just going to roughly place it on top. Hit escape a couple of times. FF again. Let's see if they have some type of air handler. Looks like they don't have that. If we just search air. Not I did the wrong thing. Oh, I see something. But so we've got a couple of actually air handlers in here, this HSU. Let's do this guy. Let's see. Don't think this is kind of what we want, but We'll try it, we'll load it in. Typically, this is just something I would just draw it myself in manually. CM for component. Yeah, that's just not gonna work for what we want. So we're just gonna leave an air handler out of this one. Um, we can also, of course, do FF then to find a washer and a dryer. I know those exist. So if I search for a washer, I've got a washer here. I'm gonna load it in, FF again. I'm going to search for dryer this time. I'm going to check that one off and load it in. And then CM for component. And I'm just going to place them roughly on top. They are a different size than the washer and dryer that are specced out here. But I'm okay with that. Hopefully you are too. So I'm just going to roughly place the washer and dryer. And then if I wanted to do things like beds, Again, that would be FF. And you can find a lot of your furniture stuff in the furniture tab. So we've got like a bed, 
that we can load in. I usually just go with the standard one. And then there's also like a couple of chairs and couches and tables, just in case you want to try to show like how many people could roughly or relatively fit. I usually will put, and we'll do CM again, some beds within like the bedrooms just to show, you know, okay, king size bed will fit in here. This one, a king size bed seems a little bit silly. So I'll do like a queen. And that way we can at least get like a feel of what's going to fit in the room. Now there aren't a lot of great components by default in the component library. So you have a couple of options out there on the internet. One being, excuse my email there. One being Revit City. So Revit City is a great website. It's just kind of very similar to the three warehouse of SketchUp where these are just CAD or rather Revit families that people have made and they just put on the internet for you to download for free. It is completely free to use Revit City. You have to make an account and accounts are completely free. And then you can either search up here and then you can download whatever it is you may be looking for. So if I wanted to search for, um, let's say an air handler. Sometimes Revit City does take a while because I'm pretty sure it just runs off a server at someone's house. So you gotta be a little patient with it. Um, no matching results. But if I search for air conditioner, we'll find something. Could be too, because it's trying to search with my username in there for whatever my username for Rivet City got filled in there automatically. And I've never uploaded anything. But yeah, as I search for air conditioner, all these options pop up. Some of them are modeled really nicely. Some of them are modeled pretty mediocrely. But then these are all just free to download. You always want to make sure that it's made using a version of Revit that is either equivalent to or later or earlier than yours. So I'm currently using Revit 2024, which is the newest version up until tomorrow. Revit 2025 comes out, um, but I can then be able to use any of these because I'm using a version that's newer than these ones. If I was using Revit 20 2008 for whatever reason I would not be able to download this file in there. Um, another great website out there is BIM Object. BIM Object is also completely free to use. You do have to make an account and the accounts are free. And you can see here just with like the trending products that they have a lot of really detailed, really nice models and they have anything you can imagine. A lot of them come straight from manufacturers too, which is really great. And you can download them as CAD blocks, SketchUp, as well as Revit families too. Um, and then one of my favorites out there, this one isn't free, but one of my favorites is called Blocks. This is a plugin that you can install into Revit. Um, it does cost money, it's $10 um, a year or no, excuse me, $10 a month, or they have $100 a year. Um, what I love is there are so many things available, and because it's a plugin in Revit, it's pretty easy to use. Um, so I have blocks installed on my Revit. I have a keyboard shortcut to it where it's just going to open up, and then I can go find, I was looking for kitchen cabinets earlier, but there's so many different cat or Re rather Revit families so if I don't want that standard bed, if I wanted to maybe do a rendering that has a little bit of a nicer bed within it, I've got some pre-made options that it's going to be really easy for me to just take that. I've got to wait one moment for it to get upgraded, and then I can place it into my model without having to do really any work at all. Um, so I personally think that it's worth it, especially if you're going to be an interior design student. I think this um, plugin is definitely worth it. Um, I don't know why I would want that block there, um, but they've got lots of different options in here. So I think it's really great for doing interior design stuff and related stuff. And you can see that they've got so many different blocks and categories that you can add in just to really make those renderings and make that design pop all the more.
but I won't be using it since you guys don't have access to it. Um, another note about blocks is I particularly love the kitchen stuff. So it's got this whole kitchen area. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the Revit kitchen stuff, especially like the kitchen furniture and super especially the base cabinets. I hate the base cabinets so much in Revit. Um, and these, this then has a lot nicer, a little bit more simplistic um, cabinets for me to put into kitchens and things. So I really like these plugins again. I'm not sponsored by them, just really, really enjoy them. Um, so back into my level one floor plan. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tackle the kitchen last because I'll also show you my little workaround having to use cabinets in the kitchen. Um, is we'll need to put in our um, closet stuff as well. So I'm going to have to load in a closet shelf. So I'm going to hit FF. And I believe if we go into the casework folder and then shelving, we have a closet shelf. This is a little bit of a quirky one component. So we're going to load this one in and then CM to start the tool. We're in the closet tool, but what we want to do is place this on a work plane. And then I'm going to just click in one direction and then the other. So see where that hidden line is going? That's essentially putting a shelf flat up against that wall. And then I'm going to go from here to here. And yes, many a times I do draw in the wrong direction. And then I just have to hit escape and restart my line. So I'm just putting a corner closet in there. I'm going to put another closet in here, just a straight line across. And one more closet here. See, I'm drawing on the wrong side, so I got to hit escape and then just drop this one in quickly. For our cabinet in here, we're actually going to load in something different. So I'm going to hit escape, FF start my tool here and I'm going to put in a let's see do we want wall cabinets can we do no nah, we don't really want one of these we want tall cabinets and I'm going to do this guy because it's just kind of like a big tall bookshelf load it what I would recommend doing is I'm going to do start my component tool which is keep or click at CM I'm going to place it somewhere first, look at it 3D, and then hit escape a bunch of times so I can use the space bar to flip them around. And I might even need to use the rotate tool. And I'm going to try to line it up straight and then rotate it 90 degrees. And another way I'll do control V to undo that. Essentially, I just want to know which way it's currently facing. So then when I'm in my floor plan, I can rotate it and I need to rotate it 90 degrees this way. It's really hard to see like which way it's facing in here. Um, and we'll fix this in a moment as well. Once I know which way it's facing, then I can move it into this cabinet and adjust its size. So I'm going to yeah, try that 24 inch one. We actually we might need a little bigger. Is that far too big? I don't think we're gonna get one that fits perfectly. So we can always do an edit type, duplicate it, and call this one my pantry. And I believe if we give it a depth, and I, it's only because I did it earlier today, a depth of one foot six and a width of two foot six. Let's hit apply and okay. That doesn't seem to be good enough for depth. So let's try a depth of two foot nine. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to measure into place. That seems pretty good. Again, we may change this wall, so we'll just leave him for the time being where he is in there. Um, if we go into our 3D view, we have like some awkward clipping going on with our shelf here because we have two long shelves sitting on top of each other. So we're going to use join geometry, which is either keyboard shortcut JJ if you set it, 
or this button right up here, and you can click on both shells and they'll become just one single shell, just kind of melded together. Now, with our kitchen, I've never been personally a big fan of the base cabinets and just the work that goes into the base cabinets in here. So if I go into FF and I go back into the casework and base cabinets, we do have a lot of options. And so if you wanted to do it this way, you're more than welcome to where we could load in like a corner unit and like we've got this unit here for a sink. We've got this one. We could kind of pick a bunch of options because we may have different options within there, a single one. We can load a lot of these in, but personally, when I go to use the component tool, I find the cabinets just like a little frustrating to use and to change size of and to move around everything that I may need to move them around. And even then, like, I put that cabinet in sideways. So now I got to go into my level one, and I've got to rotate it around, I believe, this way. And then look at it 3D. Okay, I've got it facing the right way. And then I could load in another cabinet for my sink and another cabinet here. Um, personally, I just think it's a little cumbersome, and they're really annoying to have to move and change around. So I'm going to show you a shortcut way that I put cabinets into drawings. Um, in which they show up the way I want them to or need them to in like a detail of a plan view. Um, so my shortcut way is to create a models in place component. So I'm going to click on that little arrow under the component tool and say I would like to model a component in place. Almost all the time when I do a model in place component, I'm going to do a generic one because it's just kind of easier that way. And now we need to give it a name, but as we've established, the name really doesn't matter. I'm gonna call mine Kitchen Cabinets. And then we're in a menu, kind of like our 3D modeling menu of um, SketchUp. So what we're gonna do is sort of like a push-pull, it's called an extrusion though here, where we're just gonna sketch out the general map of our um, cabinets here, and then we're going to do just and just pull them up the height of them. So I'm going to do an extrusion. I'm going to use the line tool just to draw out where I want my cabinets to go. And I am going to ignore where the stove is for the time being so I can load a stove in there. And I'm also going to use the rectangle tool just to draw another one in over here. And before I finish it off, I want to think about how tall do I want these counters to be or these base cabinets to be. So typically the cabinets are around two foot 10 inches. And then we'll also have like our countertops to bring our counter height up a little bit. So this is how tall I'm going to make them. And again, if you're a student who really likes working in consistent colors, this would be a great time to change your material, but you definitely don't have to change it. Um, especially since I work in um, just hidden lines, then I don't have to necessarily worry about this. And then I'm going to click the green check. We can look at it 3D, and so I don't necessarily have cabinets, but what I do have is just some generic block extruded in there that represents my cabinet height. And then I'm going to say, please finish this model. I like this tool as well because then I can move and play around with some of these. I can pull this out and in to see kind of like what I like more or prefer more with these faces. So I've got a little bit more freedom to move stuff around pretty easily in there. And if I needed to put together an interior elevation, I could manually just draw in the line work of where the drawers are going and where the cabinet doors are. So I like this, it gives me a little bit more freedom. Again, another shameless plug for the block tool is that they have some pretty nice cabinets in here too. So I may just opt for some of their cabinets depending on exactly what I'm doing um, for it. Now, I do need to put some countertops on top of these. 
So I'm going to go back into my level one plan and I'm going to put in a counter. So let me actually just, whoops, cancel. I double clicked on it by accident. Just going to bring that guy back out after I was moving him around a little bit. Um, I'm going to go into my load family tool. So that's Peter took at FF. And I'm going to go into the casework folder. And then there is a countertop folder in here. Now, the counter we're looking for is sort of like an L-shaped one here and then just a little nudge here. And we're not really going to find that. We've got L-shaped counters and even an L-shaped counter that has a sink. But since ours has a sink on this side, we're not going to be able to rotate this well in order to fit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a combination of these two counters to put in my, um, my countertops. So I'm going to load both of those in. Then I'm going to start the component tool, which again is keyword shortcut CM. I'm going to put one counter in on this corner and I'm just going to drag that endpoint pretty far over. It'll give me a little snap when it's in line with where that base cabinet ends. I'm going to put another counter in right over here. And I'm going to again drag this over until it gives me a little snap. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit escape once. I'm going to switch my counter to the one that has the sink. And I'm going to hit the space bar just so I can flip it. I'm going to put it on this side. And I'm going to drag that down to just the wall. If I want to move where the sink sits, I can drag here so I can move the sink to be sort of centered underneath the window. And then I'm going to hit the space bar about 17,000 times. Looks like I don't have this guy up against the wall. Maybe I have this guy too far. So I'm going to use a line and say face of wall. Let's actually click on this and move him pretty far out. So I could do a line to the face of the wall. Because I don't know. Maybe I did. Problem fine then. If I look at it 3D, there's two problems. One that I could easily solve. One that's going to take a little bit more to solve. The gross or easy solve is right here with these two counters flipping each other. We'll do the same thing we did for the closet, in which we'll use join, which again is up here, or keyboard trick at JJ. Sure, I would like to save my work. And that way I could just make that into one. The other problem isn't as noticeable, especially when you're in the, the floor plan view and when I'm in hidden line. If I go into visual style consistent colors i do have kind of this weird gray blob because my counter quote unquote my cabinets here are clipping into the sink um, i could go edit them and then edit their extrusion and like go add a part in there or rather I would have to actually do a new model in place and do a, what's called a void and then like it's kind of a lot of work for something that technically doesn't have to be done if I'm in this view you don't really notice and then especially in the floor plan I don't notice so that's kind of one of the other reasons why I sort of don't like working in consistent colors is it points out some of my my cheating flaws here um, I'm going to go back into my level one view and I got to add in my stove here in my fridge. If I do FF, I'll get back into load Autodesk family. Now, all of our stove stuff is in specialty or a lot of our kitchen stuff is in specialty equipment, which I don't consider having a kitchen special, but Autodesk does in here. So we'll see that there is this domestic folder, and this is where you're going to find a lot of your kitchen stuff. Um, so I'm going to load in, which kitchen do I want to use? I'll bring in like this range. It's kind of a nicer one. Why not? 
and I'll do CM to place it in there and it fits pretty perfect in that spot. Um, now it does bug me. I don't know if it bugs you, but it bugs me that this big word range is here. We'll deal with that in a moment. Um, especially because when we go to make a site plan, that's going to be there in gigantic text. Um, going to do FF one more time. And I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'll pick kind of one of the nicer fridges. This one's kind of cute. Load it in. Place it. It's a little different size, but that's okay. And then hit escape about 14,000 times. So if you want to get rid of that big tag that says refrigerator, you can do edit type and you can just turn show label off. You can also here, it has the ability to um, make it a right-handed fridge. I'm not sure honestly what that means, but it's now a right-handed one. And the same thing with the range. I guess maybe just the bigger size now over here. The range, we can click on edit type and we can turn the label off. And it's got a couple of other features and things that we can change in here. Every single family is different with what's going to show up here in your type properties. Let's look at it 3D one more time. Oh, I guess since it's only, so it needs to be hinged on this side of this slide, actually, but yeah, it won't matter too much in this project. So I've got my kitchen stuff in. The model in place is also something I just do whenever I've got like a quirky detail that I know how to show it, but I'm not sure how to do it in Revit, is I'll just model it in. If I've got like a backsplash or an accent wall, I might just do like a model in place and then just give it a material of it. So at this point, we've got all of our components placed. We're ready to move on to the next part of today, which is going to be just a quick demo of how to add in annotations. So I'm going to hide my CAD file so that way I'm not looking at it. So that's just click on your CAD drawing. Right click, hide in view, element or category. It's not going to make a difference in this scenario. And so that this way we're only looking at the AutoCAD or the Revit file. Excuse me. I make a lot of verbal mistakes, don't I? Um, the next thing we want to change in this view is we want to update our text size or our drawing size from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. So we're going to change that here. It looks like our text shrunk, but in reality, our drawing grew. We went from an eighth of an inch equals a foot to a quarter inch equals a foot. So our drawing now is twice as big. Um, and the other thing we want to update is we want to update our detail level because we want to dimension to the face of our stud but we can't see the face of our stud. We can only see very outside to very outside. So to update our detail level, you're gonna click on this box here. And if we make our detail level fine, we can now start to see our absolute, our sheathing. So this is the face of our siding, the inside of our sheathing. Then we've got the face of our stud and we even have two lines over here. Now it's really hard to see them because of all the line weights going on. So we can turn line weights off with the keyboard shortcut TL for thin lines, or it is this little button up here. So TL is turns thin lines on or off. So right now thin lines is off. Now thin lines is on. It's gonna be pretty obvious if thin lines is on or off. This is gonna make it really easy for us to dimension to the face of our stuff. So to place some dimensions, we're going to use the keyboard shortcut DI or this little shortcut button here. So if I do DI at, in the dimension tool, and what I want to do is click on the face of this stud, but it's not letting me by default. It wants to default to the middle of this wall. And so if I want that face, I have two options. One is to hover over that face and hit the tab key, and then I can click on it. My other option, so I'm just going to hit escape to end that real quick. My other option is to come up here and just change my default to say I would like to go to the faces of the core. And when we built out this wall, 
we put only our stud in that structural core. So if I click that option, then I can go one, go to the other side, click again, and then scroll out and click somewhere in the abyss to place it. Now, when we're Ever I talk about dimensions, I speak on making construction friendly numbers. And so right now my building from very outside to very outside is 41 feet, 11 and a quarter. Let me hit escape a couple of times just to end the tool. That's a silly number to have. It would make more sense to make this just like 42 feet. You want to try to keep all of your measurements whole inches or half inches and really not try to go underneath half inch um, increments, just because you wanna to try to have the most friendly construction numbers you possibly can. Now, if I wanna change this, some of you in AutoCAD, what you would do is you would double click and you thought I wouldn't notice and you, and you would just replace it and you would override it to say 42 feet, zero inches. If I try this, Revit's going to yell at me. It's going to say, no, we can't do that. That's not how we change dimensions in the software. What we need to do to change this dimension is click on one of the walls it references. So you'll notice when I click on this wall, oops, oh, hold on, I accidentally double clicked on it. When I click on this wall, the text here becomes blue and sort of like a little larger or highlighted. This text is now editable and I can click on it and I could say 42. And what it did was move this wall over three quarters of an inch. So now the building truly is 42 feet long. I'm going to do another dimension, but this one I'm going to do as a string. So I'm going to hit escape a couple of times. I'm going to do keyboard shortcut DI and I'm going to go from face of stud to face of stud to face of stud, and then I'm gonna click up to place it. And so now I've got my measurement from all of my exterior studs here. And again, this is not great. So what I would want like instead is to click on this wall and see how those two shrank and became blue that means I can edit them. And I can change this to like 18 feet. And that automatically updates because if this is gonna be 42, these have to add up to 42. What would be a smart thing to do is to take our overall dimension and constrain it or lock it into place. What that's saying is no matter what, this building has to be 42 feet long. So as I make changes and adjustments here, it's going to keep it at 42 feet up here. I'm going to do another dimension string, and this time I'm going to make like a few mistakes within it. So I'm going to start the dimension tool with keyboard shortcut DI. I'm going to go from the face of this stud to the left side of this stud to the left side of this stud to the right side of this one left side of my bathroom stud. This time I'm gonna accidentally hit on the middle, but I should go to the, the left of it. I also want the left of this wall here, but I'm just gonna forget, I'm just gonna plumb forget. To the left side of this stud, to the very outside, which whoops, looks like I didn't click, there we go. And then up to place it. So I've got a few things going on here. Let me hit escape a couple times. You can also just drag these out if you ever need more space for dimension strings. Um, so I've got a couple of dimensions. Some I forgot, some I um, placed to the wrong thing. So in the scenario of this one where I meant to go to the left side and I didn't, what I could do is click on this dimension and I can move this witness line, I can move this extension, and I could just click on it and drag it to the wall I intended it to be on. In the scenario of this one where I forgot one, 
what I can do is, again, click on this dimension string, and I can add a witness line in to this wall, and then just click somewhere in the abyss to end it. Now, whenever you're working with a string of dimensions, a good idea is to work your way down the line. And what we are going to be aiming for is, let me open up as you learn. Let me sign into my account. Do I have to do a duo? Cool, that's wonderful. Not a big fan of duo, but I see it's important. And then I'm just going to look at my PDF here for the dogwood. Looks like I already had it downloaded, but that's all right. Um, we are going to try to match these dimensions as best we can, or at least keep our dimensions to like a half inch or full amount uh, inches. So I've already got this 42 foot. I've already got this 18 foot and this 24 foot. Um, now I need to adjust these ones. So I'm going to make my next dimension 12 foot 3. So what I want to do is click on this wall, and I'm going to change this number to be 12 foot 3. And then you'll see this number updated because this wall is related to this dimension and this dimension. This number, if I click on this wall here, this dimension will never be editable because we need to change the thickness of that stud in order to edit that dimension. But what may happen is then if I click on this wall and I try to change this to like six foot four, this is now going to change. So whenever I'm working on dimensions, I kind of want to work my way down a line. So instead to change this, I should come over here to this measurement and then I can change this to six foot three. And then I could come here to this one and change it to five foot. I think it's five foot three and a half. I'll have to double check on this for a moment. It's five foot five and a half. So I'll just click on that number. Then I would go click on this wall. And don't be afraid to zoom in on things while you're working. I make it two foot three and a half. And then I've got all of my kind of ducks in a row. You can also dimension to the center of openings. So how we have this dimension here for the center of from face of stud to the middle of this window to face of stud. So I'm going to start the dimension tool, DI, face of stud, middle of opening, face of stud, move it up, hit escape a couple times, and then I can change that number to six foot four. You kind of notice, especially sometimes if you're zoomed in or out or just kind of zoomed at the right spot, that here we are. So at this particular zoom, I've got my dimension, but then when I click, I've got this weird witness that goes to the middle you can actually use some of those two to your advantage because you can move where they come to automatically. But if they're ever in your way, just sort of like either zoom in and then they won't be in your way anymore or zoom out and they won't be in your way anymore. And I can move this dimension string down a bit. You'll also notice when the dimension strings stack, they'll kind of snap a little bit to each other to keep them in line a bit. We also want to put a dimension string here from the face of this stud to the middle of the door to the face of the next stud. And so I'm going to start it with DI, face of stud, middle of door, face of the next stud. I'll put it up so that way it's sitting in line with here. And then I can click on the door. I believe it was four foot four, but I could be wrong. Hoping that. Four foot five, I was. So you kind of can just work your way through all of your dimensions in there. Um, what your intention and plan is, I guess, for the rest of this assignment is to add in all of these dimensions for locations of doors, windows, um, and openings. So anywhere you see a dimension measurement with these architectural tick marks, you are going to add those in. 
You do not need to add in the window tags and the door tags. So these pieces of text here, you do not need to add in the room tags within here or the material tags that are sitting underneath it. You won't need to put in like this wall section symbol and this building section, as well as this wall detail symbol. These are things that you will not need to add into your drawings at all. They are just um, in this particular document set. They're referring to like these things here. You can see D2 when we're looking at D2 on sheet A102. This is what the drawing's referring to. It's just a super zoomed in version of how that window is getting installed. Um, these elevation tags we already have by default in Revit. We just haven't filled them in or moved them around our drawing, but they're already in here for our elevations. So your task is to then on your own, go through and add in the rest of your dimensions strings in here. So if you wanted to print out a copy of this so you can have something just to etch out for each one, or I would recommend working around kind of in a circular motion. So I went and added all of my dimensions to this side of the building, and then I would go add all my dimensions to this side, and then all of them here. And I worked my way like out and then in. So I just realized, did I not change these ones? No, I did. I updated these ones. Um, and so that is how to add components and how to add dimensions. In our next video, we are going to go over how to create like some details, particularly like a wall section and features like that, as well as then how to do some rendering.